and welcome to an Everyday Cadence video. In this series on troubleshooting your running contacts and getting the stride through instead of the leap, we're going to look at the foundation skills that I worked on with Magpie to achieve a better running contact. In the first video we talked about the difference between a dog running and a difference from a dog bunching the feet and jumping. How do we teach the dog that we want them to run down the contact and not leap? Okay, so I started with some flat work and the, what you need for your flat work is such an expensive little tool. It is a cheap and cheerful yoga mat off Amazon in the colour of your choice. Now, as you may notice, my yoga mat has had quite a life. It's been chewed at. I think I cut this in here for some reason. It's, it could do with replacing, I'll be honest. But when I was doing this with Pi, this was the only thing I had handy and I went, you know, she knew what it was. So that's what came out. But yeah, buy a new one, it looks better than this. This isn't a full length. This is about a meter. I would say adjust for the size of your dog. What we want is we want the dog to be able to run across it with very little issue. We don't want the dog, don't want it so small, the dog has got to be really thinking about running across it. And trying to look where it is. What we want is the dog to just be able to run through it smoothly because that's what we're going to encourage on the dog walk. Um, I know a lot of things with mat work, they make things smaller and smaller so the dog has got to really think about where the mat is. I sometimes think that encourages the dog to pounce a little bit and sure, certainly, I mean, it depends on the breed, but certainly with sand spaniels, it makes them rather more tend to really put their feet together to get it, to like, I'm making sure I get it and pounce on it, which isn't what we want. So this is a big mat, it's not a little mat, and it's not gonna get any smaller. So, running contact mat is out. Old yoga mat, could be a carpet in actual fact. Um, it's just anything that's not too slippery and won't slip. You know, this is pretty, I mean, this will move a bit on the ground, but it's pretty good. The next thing is I'm gonna start by using treats in my hands. But ultimately, I will be moving on to a manners minder. The reason for this is I, it is easier to give the, to put a dog at a distance to get them to run through at speed to the, to the manners minder without you having to worry about the throwing. My throwing is not necessarily the most accurate. So when I'm going to a certain distance, I prefer to go and use the manners minder. <clears throat> if you haven't got something like that, just to clarify, the Treat and Train Manners Minder is a remote controlled treat dispenser. If you haven't got something like that, carry on throwing, but be really careful what you're doing. Because what can happen, and you'll probably see it when I've got the treats out, and that's why I moved this stage on quick. What can happen is the dog, you wait for the dog to run across, and the dog clocks you, it looks. Are you gonna throw the toy? And then you throw. What you get is a dog, that instead of looking forward, it looks at you. If that's happening, you might try putting out a target that they've got to run to, a crate, something something that they've got to go to rather than look at you. Um, I did experiment and I had a cone out, so had to go and wrap the cone. Slowed her down a little bit here, but you know that's what you've got to look at. You've got to think, what can I put out ahead? The Manus Minder is ideal, but I know that's not affordable for everybody. There are cheaper options. Um, many years ago, I had one that was about 30, 30, 30, 40 quid, which was just a little one that you refilled every time. And that worked fine for a long time until I went there. So, you know, there are cheaper options, but just play around with it. And if you can't afford that, then you need some sort of target, something they've got to go to. Whichever you use is going to be something we're going to have to phase out. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, so I'm going to start with my handheld treats. So Magpie absolutely loves this game. She knows the mat is going to earn her rewards. So the mat is high value. When I was first starting this as a puppy, if you've never done mat work, then it was just a case of if she went on it, she got rewarded. But of course, now she knows we've, she's what the mat is and there's high value for it. Now we've got to work on her running past. So when I started, I'm going to start, I was starting in the middle of the mat and I'm gonna, I was gonna throw treats either side of me. And how I throw them was I throw them with the hand away from the dog. If you go like this, the dog sees it. If you go like this, they're slightly less likely to see it. They still can see it, depends how good a throw you are. 
When I started, I wasn't too worried about what I was getting, other than the fact that I wanted to make sure they were crossing the mat and not leaping over it. So when you start, you look in and you go, she still pounced off there. You see? See she pounced? So I can slow it down. Wrong hand. That's better. Now, that is, so when I'm doing this, this is sort of like a warm up. Get it? And I'm watching, but there's still that leap towards the reward. So I've got to be careful. And can you see she is still watching me? That's better. Now what's there? I'm delaying the throw. Good girl. I'm delaying the throw there. So she's not leaping so much. But that does mean then she looks at me. See? See? You solve one thing, you find another problem. So, this is my... That was really bad. Oh my word. Right. Just stop. And that can happen with the yoga mat. If they get, they start pounding. That's actually a good sign that they, they um, jumped. Because they put so much force through the back feet, the mat slips. So this is kind of a slow thing that we're doing. I'm watching her feet as best I can. So I'm not going to hang around at this level for very long because I can see I'm not getting quite the behaviour I want. Basically, okay, stop, stop, stop. Basically, uh, that is just the stage I want to warm her up on the mat, to give her the understanding that you use the mat as something that you're going to run across. You can see that when she's looking at me, that running behaviour is not the same. And when I say to you, if you've got a dog that comes down and they look at you, you're not going to get the right running contacts because they don't do it the same. You try running when you're looking at someone. It's not as easy, you can't look at, you can't think what you're doing and you're going to be twisting around it. So you're not going to get the proper behaviour. So as soon as I've got that done, now I'm going to move on to having something ahead. So now we've stood either side and got you doing the mat that way. Now we're going to add the manus minder in at the end and we want the dog to run straight across. So we've encouraged that behaviour running across. Your dog will hopefully know what the manus minder is and it's set up in a roughly straight line so hopefully your dog is just going to run straight to it. What you're looking for on the mat is a run, no leaping. Magpie will probably demonstrate a leap at some point for you. So we want to see a perfect run across, no leaping, no springing over, the back feet hitting split. Now you may have to play around with this. What I found was that the distances were important. The distance between Magpie starting and the mat and the distance between where the manners minder were. So that's where we're starting back here. And we're treating it as as we're doing a running contact, so we're at to the side. If your dog needs you to be closer to start with to get the idea, then do so. Okay, are you ready? Go. That was nice. Okay, pie. Pie. And I'm just getting her to come back. Now that was nice. So I'm watching that feet behaviour. I'm watching those back feet very closely. Good girl. Pie. That was okay, but she barely touched the mat. I am still concentrating on her wanting to hit the mat. That was nice. So that was firmly in the center. Now, the reason for that mat being longer is that she shouldn't be able to miss it. it should be bigger than her stride. Good girl. So she hasn't got to think about it. Nice. As long as she's running, she should hit it. I'm just going to move this back a fraction. Okay, Pi. Good girl. I was less convinced on that one. Again, that could be my eyes. But you can see we're running through. Okay, Pi. And obviously I would do both sides. Nice. Do you see that behaviour I'm getting? Now when I first did this, I'm going to lift this up because I don't want to do it anymore. Good girl, that's enough. When I first did this, we were not getting those lots of good repetitions. We'd get a good one, we'd get two springs, we'd get a good one, but very quickly we got to a stage where she was running to the box, fine. Chase, I know, I know, it's still there, isn't it? Come here. She gets very excited about the manners minder. You wouldn't believe this was the dog that when I first had the manners minder out, she was scared of her. Now it's the best thing ever. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, so we started off, we had limited success. We had sort of good reps and then bad reps. I kept at it and it didn't take long before we were getting, we could easily get 10 good reps one session. I usually go 10 is my number. So once I'd got 10 reps in an, and successfully on either side, so remember you've got to be either side and more than once. So don't just go, oh, one off, I had a good session. No, but more than once, then that's when I move on. So in the next video, I'm going to demonstrate how I moved on to actually mm -hmm. incorporating it with the contact so you can see where you go next. So I hope you've enjoyed this Everyday Canines video. And if you have, you might like to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.